and settings for the arpeggiator output of the Chord Machine 2. This list has four chords and settings for the output of the arpeggiator that is uh, skipped through by the clock divider, so it's in sync with the beat. What does that mean? If I unplug the clock divider, I can now skip through this list manually. And now let's have a look at what we can see here. So we can define the root note of the chord that is uh, playing. Um, right next to it we can define the inversion. Here's the other hand here. You can choose the inversion of the chord. P15 is uh, the, the actual chord and there's a list of chords that you can uh, choose from or define your own chords. So root note, inversion and the chord. Then if we move further on in the list we define the arpeggio output. Here we have chosen the arpeggio to play the chord, the notes of the chord. We could also use the scale that we are in. We can use a continuous quantizer here or a clock sync quantizer. And we actually have an LFO now plugged into the input that has been quantized now by the clock input. back to the chord arpeggio. If we move on we can obviously do things like transposing, we can transpose the arpeggio output an octave up for example like this. We could choose a different chord for the arpeggiator than for the chord output. We can change the direction of the arpeggiator. And this one has also a random feature. And here's a clock divider for the arpeggio. Here de we define the length of the list. So um, everything we've seen here and um, it's just one part of the list, part one. Now we could go up and we could actually do up to 24 of these, um, but for this list we only defined four. This is the second part. And yeah, we could do all this here again. So define the root node, find the inversion, choose a chord for this, define what the clock, uh, what the quantizer is doing, and so on. You've seen that before. And again, 
if I plug in the clock, we switch through all these four parts of the list. Thank you. 